It's June the 15th, 2021. I bring this uh, regular meeting of council to order. Results of the agenda for the June 14th, 2021 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councilor DeWarrier, seconded by Deputy Mayor Montoni. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. We have on video tonight CFO Ganita and, uh, and also uh, Chief Fedorchuk. Um, Councilor White is not able to attend tonight. Result in minutes of the June 1st, 2021 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councilor Laurier, seconded by Councilor Friesen. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. All right, so reception delegation. We have tonight with us CFO Canina and also uh, from uh, Pasco Coal Harding Company. Mr. Bruce Hardy. So I guess, uh, Mr. Ganita, I'll let you uh, take the floor from here. Okay, I trust everyone has uh, a copy of the draft federal gas tax revenue annual expenditure report on their device okay. open. So the started off the year with an unspent balance of six, 657,191 received 216,020 from the province, earned $5,855 of interest, and spent $20,000 on sidewalks, which falls under the local roads category, and $9,463 on a household hazardous waste storage container, which falls under the solid waste category. So total expenses were to 29,463, leaving an unspent fund balance at the end of the year of 849,603. And then the, the cumulative uh, numbers are in the second column since the start of the federal gas tax program. Uh, 3 million from the province since the start and spent 2.3 million. Any questions? Any questions? No, uh, there's been no questions. Anything further, uh, Mr. Kavita? No, nothing for me. Mr. Hardy. All right, good evening, everyone. Good evening. I, um, I'm here to uh, present the audit report on uh, the financial presentation that Terry uh, just made. Uh, now, this is uh, not the type of audit report like we do for the whole town of Swan River. This is uh, an, a report on compliance with an agreement. And in this case, uh, Terry, are you able to share the um, the audit report? Or do, does everybody have a copy of it in front of them? Yes. Okay. All right. So in the first paragraph, um, it just uh, identifies what did we audit. And we audited the uh, Thomas Fawn Rivers compliance as at its year end, December 31st, 2020, with the criteria that's been established in the terms and conditions of the municipal gas tax agreement uh, that came into effect in April of 2014 between the province and the town of Swan River. Uh, management's responsibility um, is responsible for the compliance with the criteria that was established by the provisions of that agreement and to uh, have such internal controls as management determines necessary to ensure that they remain compliant. Our responsibility is to express an opinion on this compliance based on our audit. So we conducted our audit in accordance with generally accepted auditing standards. Uh, we have to plan and perform the audit 
and we have to obtain reasonable assurance whether the town of Swan River complied with the, price, the criteria that we've discussed. And we believe that the audit evidence that we have obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our audit opinion. And therefore, in our opinion, in the last paragraph, the federal gas tax revenue expenditure report, the one that Terry just presented, presents fairly in all material respects the funding and the expenditures for the year ended December 31st, 2020 in compliance with that municipal gas tax agreement. And once um, once this has been accepted this evening, then um, I will uh, sign off on the auto report, uh, get that into Terry's hands, and then he will submit the report with the independent auditor's report attached to the province. Okay. Any, any questions, Councillor Delorier? Um, I see in, in on the first page or page two, I guess it says that this is uh, you know you're auditing the agreement that came into effect uh, April first, twenty fourteen. Um, I'm almost positive that the gas tax, the ta like the towns were getting gas tax prior to this, was that under a previous agreement? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Terry could confirm that for us, but uh, that's my understanding. Uh, my recollection is that this is the most current agreement that's been in effect, but there was prior ones uh, to that. Okay, good. I just didn't want to be losing it. Anything further? Okay, nothing there. Uh, so, Mr. Hardy, I, I believe that uh, that concludes that. So we do thank you and your firm for, uh, for doing this uh, report for us. All right, thank you very much. All right, have a good evening. All right, you too. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on, 6.1. Uh, that is the letter from uh, Executive Director Dennis Volkoff in regards to the um, uh, resolution that the town of Swan River supported in regards to uh, as you can see in the letter, I don't have to read it all up for you, but uh, Section 172 of the Municipal Act was uh, lobbying the province to change the terms that were outlined basically to uh, that applied to lease agreements for capital property value of about $20,000. And it looks like there had been a new resolution, so they're going to basically rescind that or remove that resolution and uh, work under the new resolution 44 2017 uh, which uh, the the two uh, Manitoba Municipal Administrator Association and the province of Manitoba will review and consider revising uh, section 172. Any discussion on that at all? Just information more or less. 6.2 Resolve the building permits 3021 through 3821 with a total estimated value of $42,200 being received. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Deborah Manuantoni. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7.1. Resolve that the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by uh, Deputy with Tony, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 721. Result of the May 2021 Protected Services Report be received and accepted. Moved by Deputy Mayor with Tony, seconded by Councillor Morio, discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Council reports? I'll start with uh, Councillor or Deputy Mayor Wayne Tony. Uh, I have nothing to report today. Okay. Thank you. Um, Councillor Friesen? Uh, just the fact that we, uh, the community have got all their. Uh, Stuff done at the cemetery, at the Legion Park, at the Swan 
and at Logan Park last Monday, and we all social distanced while we planted, and uh, I think it went very well. Now we just have to water and weed, and we'll be good. That's everything for me. Okay. Well, make sure that you thank your uh, committee or group for doing a fine job again. And I would name so them really... all, but I know I would forget somebody and then I feel terrible. So we know who you are. Yeah, they there, know who so they are and we do appreciate the work that they have done. Thank you. Go ahead. And the flowers are going to be hung. The pot, the hanging baskets are going up tomorrow. Nice. On the okay, perfect. Good addition to the town anyways, right? For summer? <clears throat> Councilor Morio. Uh, two meetings last week that I um, attended. Uh, the first one was our sh shared services uh, negotiation meeting with Thomas Bozeman. Um, I'll let the chair report on that fairly well. Um, and then had a, a Zoom uh, meeting with uh, the Enterprise Center and that group, uh, which is Lindsay Cook and the uh, UCN group that's there. Uh, where they discussed and reviewed uh, the ongoing training uh, that's being provided here and some long-term training. Uh, one of the key messages that they uh, wanted to highlight was that uh, to let people know that there's still lots of training available and numbers need to uh, go up to help sustain the, the center. So if we can get the word out um, that there is training available here, uh, a lot of it's online right now, but there is some training going on um, in various programs that uh, still have um, vacancies or openings to maximize the classes. So, um, one of the two of the big uh, takeaways was is that uh, the province um, has announced that has made agreements with some of the training facilities to double the LPN training uh, for the next two years. Um, so the class here in Swan River um, is doubling this year and next year. 20 to 40 students, um, which is boding well to the one of the side projects that Councillor White and myself were working <coughs> on with the LPN to BN training um, that uh, MLA Wolchuk is helping on. Um, we did get a response back from the Minister um, responsible for Education um, outlining that it's up to the educational institutions to um, apply directly to the province for funding for the that program, um, which is the bridging program from LPN to PN, um, and with the need for nursing that's up in here in the north, um, we see it as an avenue along with the um, doubling of the nursing on uh, the LPN, that there's a good safe way that we can potentially get that here. So um, our next step is that we need to make contact with um, either Red River or ACC that have these programs bridging um, to see if they're interested here um, to post that here locally where our local LPNs can actually take that bridging program right here in the community without having to go to the city or farther north uh, to, to get it so hopefully we can make some way on that but uh, we're going to be making some, some phone calls here to some uh, senior people in those colleges to try and get them to be interested or see if there's appetite to come to the valley here and then apply for that uh, funding that the province is investing into healthcare training. So, and then Melly Wojcik has agreed to help recent meals where he can on that. So, that's all I got. That, that's good news and especially we know that we have some vacancies in our uh, facilities in the valley and uh, the, the, the more I think we can have that operating this one river and expanding this one river, the better opportunity maybe to us for us to recruit some of those individuals to work here as well. So that's great news. Hopefully we can make it all train right. locally they say well, cool. that's right, exactly. Because I get you know you get a taste of life of what it's like to live here too, right? Yeah. So good. Thank you. Councillor Gloria. Uh only meeting I had since last council meeting was uh with Thomas Bozeman and I'll report on that in camera. Okay. Uh, for me, we had our uh, Health Facilities Foundation meeting last night. Uh, out of that, basically, for us to know that um, 
basically, I guess what Council Memorial is talking about is to expand uh, the um, the recruiting uh, or using some of the recruiting dollars from uh, the doctor recruitment fund. So there's some discussion about that, looking at some agreements with, and how we can recruit uh, nurses that we need in, in the valley. Um, the uh, the fund has been officially been changed uh, by the board, and the board uh, the fund is now called the Fund for Recruitment and Retention of Medical Professionals. So that's the name of the, of the fund now moving forward. Um, also, I guess last week uh, the province has received our proposal on uh, what Main Street West and getting that project done. So I spoke with uh, MLA Wolchuk last week and said that that stuff is, or that uh, proposals moved to uh, the minister and hopefully we can hear some word on that soon because definitely we want to see that project move ahead this year. Uh, I also want to thank uh, or welcome Staff Sergeant Duncan to uh, Swan River, Swan River Valley. I believe he's here now and uh, I have requested to have a meeting with him and also with uh, uh, Mr. Poole and myself in the next week to go over some things uh, that our community is concerned about and uh, we want to get off on the right foot so we do welcome him to uh, Swan River. Other than that, everything else has been said as far as uh, meetings with shared services and all that that I had also attended. So uh, moving on then, we have the CO's report here. Yeah, there's, you go on with that? there's no questions. I really don't have anything to add other than what's been said already. On, on the uh, proposal timeline, do we have a drop dead date, so to speak, where if we don't hear back from them, we have to just carry on with what our original plan was? We didn't include that in the proposal, but we you guys have an internal one? Yeah. Okay. And uh, as long as we keep that on the radar, because I, I would hate for us to not at least do something there yeah. if this falls through. And I guess my second thing is a comment. I like the, uh, at the bottom of your report, the ongoing, looks like an ongoing list here. Yeah, just for, for just to keep track of our Is, is this, uh, is the first one from March, is that dealing with the three lots that were sold? Uh, yes, that was the- So you, so you got back to that guy and got yeah, that all sorted everything, out? Everything, everything's done. Everything sorted, he was happy? <clears throat> yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I guess from last council meeting, there was also the, uh, we we're going to put that to the cal meeting regarding uh, the request, to, the arena request. Mr. Mr. Uh, Anderson. Mr. Anderson. Oh, on the yeah. cal meeting. Yeah, yeah. I haven't had that. Okay. I haven't added that to the cal yet. Okay. Sure, yeah. That's it for me. Any other further questions? On, uh, okay. Okay, so moving on then. 8.1, <clears throat> results of the Northwest Regional Library audit, audited financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2020 be received. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Any comment? Uh, go ahead, Councillor Delorier. I was just gonna say if anybody has any questions, I can try to answer them to the best of my ability. Uh, no. No questions? Okay, I'll ask the question. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 9.1. Resolve that the conditional use 1 2021 to allow a retail business in R5 zone, specifically on lot 4, plan 1913, be approved. Moved by. <coughs> Deputy Mayor with Tony, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion. This is on the uh, on the delegation that we had a couple of weeks ago. Councillor Morio. Uh, I'd like to see uh, some of the additional conditions added to that uh, approval, uh, specifically that uh, the condition applies to this applicant only and not carry on budgeting the lot. Less complaint in his uh, work, along with uh, potentially no that sign, that um, advertising sign. If they want to put up a sign, it has to be a regular dark sign, uh, a neon LED. 
flash and take them on the side. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Councilor Delorey. Um, I support the, the two restrictions that Councilor Mori already put forward. Um, and on, on the first one specifically, it's for this business at this property, for this applicant, that they sell the business, there's a conditional use that would have to be reapplied for. That's correct. So, so I think it needs to say that. And I'd like to add another, the, another condition that uh, operating hours be between uh, 9 and 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. Monday to Friday, uh, noon and five on Saturday, and uh, closed on Sunday. Six p.m. or nine. I put I put six p.m. Uh, I'm just yeah, and that's it, it is people wanting to enjoy their properties in the in the evening more so. So, with 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 that type of condition, you already have a bylaw. Already for hours of business, or are we just piggybacking off the province? We, we talked about that a little bit. Yeah, there's conditional use. Uh, you can do that in a conditional <coughs> use. We can we can absolutely put those conditions on that. With the administration, like council to know, is that it, we would like a full operational time frame. We wouldn't like to split up the operations to retail as opposed to training. Mm -hmm. It'd be very hard to enforce, I think. But. Uh, if we can just allow them to operate between a certain amount of time, definitely be good for Okay. Uh, um, are you, I, I guess my question is, before I go to you, Councillor Friesen, that are you ready for this resolution if you're looking at making changes to it? Because you're looking at making amendments to this and, and you have to um, on making amendments to it. Yeah, I can add these conditions. So as long as I'll just uh, summarize them here. Okay, I'll go to Councilor Freeze and then Deputy Mayor Matoni. Just a question. She said that uh, they would be doing booking classes in the evening. So does this mean they can't do that? Uh, they, they can, but within the, the hours that we specify. So uh, the recommendation from administration is 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday to Friday, Saturday, 12 noon to 5 p.m. So it's 9 p.m., not 6. That was the council. That's only the recommendation from administration, so council can set that. So Council Delory has already set uh, 9 a.m. Well, I'm fine su not, I'm fine su 9 suggested 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., so whatever the wish of council. That was my point exactly as well. This is, um, I missed, uh, I apologize, I missed the delegation, but uh, in terms of um, doing lessons and workshops, those are all, in my mind, after work activities um, that would take you into the la latter part of the day and into the evening. And if we were to put a 6 p.m. cap on that, that would hinder those lessons and workshops and I think that that's I think that's important um, as well for this business Council Morial um, I'm good with the night cam if Council Morales right. I'm fine with this Council Freeze I was just thinking you know, if, if uh, you could still have nine to six and then Put an extra thing that if you have classes, classes only up till nine. I don't know how you could word it. Let's just do the nine to nine. So where where are we at with this? Here. Okay. So do we want? Are we saying that detail goes till six and then? Lessons and workshops until nine. Yes. Yeah, so Why would we do that? Or is it just all the sorts of that? Deputy Mayor Wintoni. I guess that's that's really splitting hairs because if you were working or doing a lesson 
or a workshop from six six o'clock on and you needed to purchase something for your class, whether it be quilting supplies, I don't really know an example, but then you'd be splitting the hair of that person taking that class and I don't know, I think that would really hinder, in my opinion, hinder the opportunity of of providing that lesson. Well, I was just going to say the same thing. I mean, the, the whole intent is to, to allow the business without impeding on the quality of life of the neighbors, whether they're there to, to buy a, yeah, something or that. Yeah, I, I, I think it works fine up to nine for, for all uses. Okay, then I'll uh, go ahead. In, in the hours, do we need to specify no operating hours on Sunday or because it's not enumerated, it goes without saying? I have that in the resolution. Okay. I have Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., Saturday, 12 p.m. to 5 p.m., and Sunday closed. So I'll leave the, the amended and then the move on the second or to agree. Resolve the conditional use 1 2021 to allow a retail business in R5 zone, specifically on lot 4 plan 1913, be approved with the following conditions. Can I say that word? Sui generi. Sui generi condition. The entire conditional use be applied to this applicant only. When this applicant ceases to own the business or property, the conditional use is null and void, meaning the next owner of or uh, sorry, meaning the next owner or of either the business or the property must again apply for conditional use prior to the operation. No illuminated signs shall be allowed on the property. Business shall operate, including retail, lessons, and workshops for the following hours: Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. till 9 p.m. Saturday, 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. and Sunday closed. The mover and the seconder were uh, Council of Deputy Mayor Wintoni, and it was seconded by Councilor Friesen. Okay, so I guess yeah. you agree to the. Okay, so any further discussion, Councilor Deloria? Um, should this pass? Can, when when you notify them of these conditions, can you also include uh, information regarding uh, development permits? They all, they also mention that they're going to be putting up structures on the property. And I don't want them to be taken by surprise that that that'll be a requirement. So, um, you, I believe even temporarily you need a development permit for, for structures like that. So, yeah. so I I think it best to get out in front of that and uh, and let let them know that. that because they had already mentioned it in their presentation that, that that's part of their plan. So I think knowing that, we should give them the information they're going to need to make their decisions. Yep. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Ten point one. Resolved that the Accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 276462, 6, 2, number 27713 for 162,185 and 91 cents as listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 4872, number 4877, totaling 80,643 and 66 cents as listed on Schedule B. Payroll counts checks number 4878 to number 4887, totaling $103,403.61 as listed on Schedule C. Direct deposits totaling $19,677.01 as listed on Schedule D. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.2.
whereas subsections 306.1 of the Municipal Act provides that a municipality may cancel or reduce business taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations for the Manitoba Assessment Services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alteration made by Manitoba Assessment Services on June 3, 2021 be made to the 2021 business tax roll with the resulting reduction amounting to $67.50. Moved by Council Morio, seconded by the Premier Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 10.3 Result of financial statements for the five months ending May 31st, 2021 be adopted as received. Moved by <clears throat> Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 10.4. Result of draft audit audited by Federal Gas Tax Funding Annual Expenditure Report for the year ended December 31st, 2020, be approved. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.5. Resolved the pursuits of sections 152.3 of the Municipal Act Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. Items to be discussed, purchase services with um, Manitoba's Bozeman and with Swan Valley West. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Morio. All in favor? It's carried. We're in camera. Resolve this regular meeting of council now be adjourned at 8.54 p.m. Moved by Councilor Delorier, second by Councilor Friesen. All in favor? It's carried. We're adjourned. Thank you, everybody.